Yes. She has her own people that she loves. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome in the spirit of the living Christ as we gather to worship today. Uh, I want you to tell you that we're going to have communion next Sunday, uh, and it's going to correspond with the third petition of the Lord's Prayer, give us a stay, our daily bread. So it seemed appropriate to do, to do communion that Sunday instead of today. Um, I want to, uh, again, say thank you to everybody. I know we still have some folks that are headed north soon, and we're going to miss you, but look forward to your return uh, next fall and bid you a safe journey north and a, a wonderful summer. Um, and your return will be a, a gift in and of itself. So we look forward to that as well. The community garden continues to take shape and we have almost all of the, the reclaimed water supply in place. We've got a few things left to do, but all the piping has been placed down and tied in and uh, it's about 90% done, I think. Um, there's an area where a little looks like, well, it is a small structure. Uh, that's going to have a roof on it. It will be a place where somebody can sit if they'd like, uh, but that's not its primary purpose. Its primary purpose is going to be to be able to collect uh, rain in the gutters to go to two rain barrels that are going to be on, on each side of it. And so the fact that somebody can sit there out of the sun is is just an added benefit, but that's that's happening as as I have counted, there are five raised beds out there. There are 15 boxes that have two beds each in them. Uh, and then we have our, our orchard, uh, which has uh, eight or nine trees in it at this point in time. Uh, the piers for a gazebo have been placed and and so that will be constructed in time and uh, on the 28th of may we're going to dedicate the garden and that will be at one o'clock and immediately following there will be uh, a celebration of, of ministry here in the annex and I look forward to that uh, especially I look forward to that for our grandchildren to be able to uh, have a sense of what their grandfather has been doing all these years. And, and so I'm, I'm excited about that and, and looking forward to it. Um, then on the 29th, that will be my last Sunday and following that service, we'll have a brief 
congregational meeting, which is a requirement of the Book of Order, and the, the only item of business will be officially uh, dissolve my call here, effective the, uh, I guess, either the 1st of July or the 30th of June. I don't know the, the particulars of that. Um, but that is a requirement, and we will briefly uh, go, go about that bit of business. And then uh, I will begin some vacation before my official retirement starts. And we will have all, almost all our kids and grandkids here with us. And, and so um, I also want to prepare you that um, we have four sons. I'll let you decide whether they take more after me or more after Cinda. But they have been scheming for a while. And, and some of you may remember that I've done children's stories where I ask kids to bring something up. And, and then I will use whatever they've brought up to uh, talk about how that reminds me of God. Well, our sons are taking that as a challenge to stump their dad. And uh, one son who, who will remain anonymous has redefined it as stump the chump. So uh, I have no idea what, what's going to happen, uh, but I, I continually tell these sons that uh, so far I've been able to figure out something that that reminds me of God, and I don't anticipate they'll be up to the challenge anyway. So I'm egging them on, and uh, you can determine whether they're more like their dad or their mom on that Sunday. Maybe you've made up your mind already. I don't know. Um, but th those are, are some of the announcements. This next month is going to be a blur, but I, I'm excited and uh, thing, good things are happening, and it's, it's too early to be able to say what those are, but good things are in the works, and a big one is the community garden. So uh, those are the announcements that I would share with you. I would invite you to sign and indicate your presence on the uh, red welcome books. We would love to know you're with us. If you have an email address, that, that allows us to be in contact with you. And, and if you'd like to receive uh, the, the weekly email, just write yes and put an email address in there. We'll be glad to do that. Uh, those are the announcements that I would, would share with you. And we come to that point of the service that we share every week. And it is so significant, not only on a personal level, but on a worldwide level. So let us share the peace of Christ in this manner. As forgiven people, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I would invite you to take a moment to, to greet one another. Feel free to move about the sanctuary. Uh, and is somebody saying something back here? No. Oh. We're just talking. <laughs> I thought somebody was trying to give me a clue of something go going on that I had forgotten. Um, we'll move around the the sanctuary, let no one leave here this morning without being warmly greeted and, and know that, that you are welcome and significant. Let us greet one another in that, that spirit. Feel free to move about. Sorry, I was just trying to get another bulletin. There's some more over there. Who needs a bulletin? I'll, I'll go get one. I'm going back that way. Well, I'm, like, I'm going to go. I want to Are hugs to allowed? You. There's somebody in the back I've never seen. I'm glad it is. Mm -hmm. Good morning, 
I, I, I. Another base. We need another base. That's okay. We can use a third base. <laughs> I invite you to let the prelude continue to open your heart and spirit to the presence of the living Christ in our midst.
Would you join me as we reaffirm our identity in Christ? Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is error, truth. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying to ourselves that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I would invite all who are able to stand as we sing together number 63, the first, second, third, and fifth verses. seated. Throughout this month of May, I will be reading each Sunday our Lord's Prayer, and I share again these words. Pray then in this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. May God open our hearts to hear his word to us today. Well, my, my good friend Steve Braggington sent me uh, a dictionary. I think it's called the Newfie Medical Dictionary, and I thought I'd share uh, a few definitions from that dictionary with you. 
artery, the study of paintings, bacteria, the back door of the cafeteria, benign, what you be after you be eight, cauterized, made eye contact with her. That's okay, it gets worse. Colic, a sheepdog. I'm going to stop there. There are more, and um, I'm probably going to share more with you because as we look at the Lord's Prayer in all seriousness, the words matter. They matter a great deal. And as we pray the Lord's Prayer, it's very important to begin to know what it meant to Jesus' hearers and what it means then to us. Today we're looking at your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I almost wish I had picked the King James Version to use. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it in, is in heaven, because there's a nice rhyme to that. Thy instead of my. Thine instead of mine. But your kingdom, God's kingdom. The kingdom of God was something that was central to Jesus' ministry. As a matter of fact, the the first sermon in, in Mark's gospel, the sermon around which the whole interpretation of that gospel is, is to be found and understood. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel and believe in the good news. The kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? simply this. It's wherever and whenever God's intention for life is being lived out. Or another way to say it, the kingdom of God is wherever the great commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul and your neighbor as yourself, wherever that's being lived out. The kingdom of God is where God's reign is visible and seen. It's not about being religious or pious. It's more about being obedient. And seeking to live the life God intends for us. And the kingdom of God has this incredible aspect to it. it it's, it's now and it's not yet at the same time. We get glimpses of the kingdom of God, but the full picture of the kingdom of God is not yet for us to see. It's almost like you get most of our lives are, are lived looking at the backside of, of a tapestry where we just see all the the various threads in different ways, and, and we might look at some of the ways some of the colors come together and we're impressed, but the kingdom of God is, is like when that's turned over and we see a, a piece of that in all its magnificence and glory. That's the now, but we've not yet seen the whole of the tapestry. The now and the not yet. But when we pray, your kingdom come, we're praying for God's kingdom to be manifest in our midst. And is so often the case in Hebrew poetry, your kingdom come is followed by your will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven is, is kind of a defining of your kingdom. Come. 
Let me illustrate one of the ways, one of the many ways that God's kingdom has come into our midst. She was the custodian for the church Cinda was serving in the Goodyear Heights section of Akron, Ohio. And she lived in a neighborhood that was drug and gang infested. And Joyce Berge, who was the custodian there at the church, wanted to do something about that. She was concerned about her grandkids and and the bad influences of the neighborhood. And so she was able to get from the city a, a house that was abandoned and for sale for a dollar. And she got that house and and she was able to connect with the men's group at Cinda's Church and some other groups, and they began to refashion that house and, and take care of it and, and began to restore it. And she turned it into what became known as the Lighthouse of Hope. And it was a place where kids could come after school and and they could work on their homework. They could sing some songs. They could get help with their homework. They could be away from the influence of the streets around them. And over time, those streets around the lighthouse of hope changed. The drug dealers left. The crime went down. The kids were being transformed. And Joyce Berge, the custodian for Cinda's church, had, had taken seriously your kingdom come. And the folks in that neighborhood and that church got a chance to see a a glimpse of the kingdom of God, what it looks like, and how lives get transformed in God's kingdom. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Now, I'm, I'm pausing here, and I can almost hear as I pause here a scolding from Cinda's grandmother and aunt. And they carried that tradition on from her grandfather who wanted to say over and over again, don't put a comma between uh, your will be done. It needs to be your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I understand that. But I'll live with uh, that little voice that's chastising me right now. Your, Your will be done. What in the world is God's will? Leslie Weatherhood was trying to make sense of God's will during World War II, a pastor in London, as he watched the bombings take place and and watched little kids being killed by bombs, watched little kids being orphaned by bombs, watched families being destroyed by bombs, watching the city being destroyed by bombs. And he said, surely this cannot be the will of God. And it would be good for us to say exactly the same thing when we're talking about Ukraine. Surely that's not the will of God. He said the the will of God has, has three components to it. The first and the last are exactly the same. What God intends, that's God's intentional will. That's God's dream for us from before the time we were born. That's God's dream for creation. That's God's dream for, for this world that's, that is to be a world that is a source of fulfillment and joy and, and where a sense of being alive carries with it a, a, a tremendous uh, amount of joy and gratitude and love and a sense that that all is well. But a war or other things can, can let us know very quickly that what God intends has somehow been marred by human sinfulness, by the power of sin. 
And that's not just moral wrongdoings here and there. It's far more deadly power than that. A far more destructive power than that. A far more insidious power than that. It's the kind of power that pollutes everything it gets hold of. And he said, what God is doing in the midst of this is is taking the events that are caused by evil, by sin being manifest in, in the world, and redeeming them. And sometimes we, we will see the, the full redemption right before our eyes, and other times we'll only be able to see that redemption in the fullness of time. The now and the not yet. It's not God's will that people are murdered or evil takes place in this world. That's the power of sin and evil. It's not God's will. But God's will is to take that and to redeem it. To take that which is dead and renew it to life. To take that which seems to be utterly hopeless and to bring new hope and new possibility. That's God's circumstantial will. And the third expression of God's will is God's ultimate will, which is exactly the same as God's intentional will and and God's circumstantial will, taking and redeeming the events that pollute God's intention to begin with and taking them so God's intention ultimately is what prevails. And we have in the cross of Christ the absolute sign that that is the case. That everything that sin and death and evil could possibly throw at God, God took on in the cross and triumphed over in the resurrection. It's not God's will. that an evil person like Vladimir Putin recklessly destroys life in Ukraine just because he wants to feed his addiction for power. It's not God's will that a small child is abandoned. Several years ago, we had a a fundraiser for a young girl who was part of Manatee Elementary School who was, was just brutally murdered. That wasn't God's will. But the coming together of of the community and and the funds that were raised and the expressions of of love and outreach that came as a result of that, that's God's will at work redeeming that situation and we only can trust but we can trust based on the reality of Easter and the resurrection that that little girl's violent horrible death was not the last word at all but that God would take that and transform it into something that one day we will all see when we were in a church in, in Ohio, we had a, a brilliant young, young girl who was a national merit finalist, and she was going to, to work in the summer before heading off to college, and the sun was shining just in the wrong direction, and she pulled out, not seeing a semi coming that hit her car and, and created tremendous heartache for her and the family, leaving her Uh, in a coma for a long time with physical and and mental issues, that that brilliant mind struggling with doing simple addition and subtraction. It wasn't God's will that she would pull out at that intersection. It was simply an accident. Not God's will. But God's will was apparent in all the prayers that, that went out. God's will was apparent when the 
the neurosurgeon came in, a little pipsqueak of a guy. I'm not hopefully too biased on that. A little pipsqueak of a guy came in and said to the family, I've done this many times and there's no hope for your daughter. You might as well just unhook her from the machines and let her die. And the mother who was not exactly the person who would stand up and stand out in a crowd stood up and said, Sir, I appreciate your expertise as a doctor, but our trust is in a power far greater than yours, and we're going to keep our daughter hooked up to these machines until God indicates to us that it's time to unhook her. Well, she she came out of the coma, and she began to have a new life, a changed life. That was much more like the will of God, redeeming what seemed to be hopeless. Adam Hamilton shares a story of of a young man in his congregation, a young football player, who in his senior year was involved in in a collision on the football field, and it resulted in a subdural hematoma. And, and simply put, it caused tremendous brain and head injury damage. He had to learn how to walk again and how to talk again. James McGinnis is, is an incredible member of that, that congregation, and Adam says his smile is infectious. And one of the things he does on Sunday mornings when he's in church with his family is he looks around the congregation, and we're talking a congregation of about five or 8,000 people on a given Sunday morning. And he looks for people that look sad. And he does the universal sign language, I love you sign, so they can see it. One day... He was with his parents and they had stopped for gas and they were getting ready to go and a motorcycle gang came in, a biker gang came in and he said to his dad, don't pull out yet. And he got out of the car and he walked toward these rough, tough bikers And it was pretty clear as he approached that they weren't too interested in being interrupted. It was also very clear as he walked with his gait and they heard him say some words that there was something special about this young man. Or maybe others would put there was something quote-unquote wrong with this man. And it disarmed them. And as he got closer to them, he spoke and he just said, I want you to know you're loved. And while he was standing there, one of these rough, tough bikers started to cry. And he said, I grew up in a family where I was rejected, and never loved. It wasn't the will of God that that young James McGinnis would be injured in that football game. That wasn't God's love or will. But God's will was captured in that moment, many moments in church, but also that moment at the gas station where somebody whose life had been cut off from love knew that love was there for him. That's God's will. God's circumstantial will, redeeming the situations of life that bring pain and destruction and heartache. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We looked at heaven last week as 
as part of the power and glory of God. In this, in this petition, it's, it's about the, the presence of God. Heaven is wherever God rules and reigns. Now, there are basically four kinds of views of heaven. There are the pantheists who think that, that God is everywhere. Everything is God. The, the mosquito, the animal, the flower, everything is God. That's pantheism. Then there are the atheists on the total other side of the, the spectrum where nothing is of God. God's just an illusion. God's somehow a manifestation of our, our weak mental capacities, our, our emotional need to have something. That's atheists on that side. Pantheists on this side, atheists on this side. And then there are the deists who think, and say, God got everything started and then retreated to heaven and doesn't have anything to do with what's going on. And the fourth view is the biblical view. And the biblical view of heaven is this. Wherever God's presence is experienced, that's heaven. You remember the story of Moses Take off your shoes, Moses. You're on holy ground in the midst of the desert. No reason to think that that pile of sand was holy or special, except God was there. When the presence of God is somewhere, heaven is there. It can be anywhere. Anywhere. God's presence is The psalmist in the 139th Psalm says, where can I go from your presence? It doesn't matter where I go. No matter how high, no matter how low, in life, in death, wherever, you're there. The presence of God. When we're encountered by the holiness of God. Which corresponds to God's will, by the way which also corresponds to God's kingdom, by the way. It can be in the still, small voice, like the prophet Elijah heard. It can be in flaming chariots. It can be on a cross where a Roman soldier says, truly, this was the Son of God. I conclude with this example of, of God's will being done, God's kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven. Have you ever heard of the recycled orchestra? It comes from a small town, Katura, Paraguay, a city just about three miles outside of the capital city of Paraguay. and and. To be truthful, it's not really a city, it's a slum. It's a slum right on the, the, that the main attraction of the city, as it were, the slum, as it were, is, is a big garbage dump where three tons of, of waste are piled every single day. And, and the people of that city are so poor that, that their job, their quote-unquote career is to go through the, the garbage dump and, and look for some things that they might pull out and resell. A young man by the name of Faz, Fav, Favio Chavez went to there as an environmental engineer and decided that maybe in his spare time he could teach kids music. But there were no instruments, and so he enlisted uh, the skills of, of one of those people, like, like our, our neighbor Chuck, who those of you that know, he can, he can do anything with anything. 
And, and he enlisted him to, to help make instruments for these kids. And so they would go into the dumps and, and they would get things from the dump, cans, boxes, all kinds of things. And they created instruments and he would teach the kids music. The Recycled Orchestra is a bunch of kids from a slum in Paraguay who've played before monarchs, before politicians, and I believe I'm accurate in saying at Carnegie Hall. They play Mozart. They've accompanied Stevie Wonder I'd tell you Metallica, but you may or may not have heard of Metallica. Your grandkids have. Your kids have. They played with Metallica. They've been around the world. And their instruments are all fashioned out of things that come out of that garbage dump. They've been on 60 Minutes, and the sound of that orchestra is amazing. Perhaps what's also equally amazing is some of the proceeds from the fame of that that orchestra and their travels have come back to the city. And so they've been able to use some of those monies to begin to build better housing for people in that slum city on the edge of the garbage dump. I think in many ways, the recycled orchestra is a wonderful illustration of your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because when those kids are playing music, God's there. God's presence is there in the midst of that slum and dump. God's there. New life is there. Hope is there. Change is there. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we pray that, hang on. Buckle up. What is it? Some of the, what's the saying? Buckle up, buttercup. Buckle up, buttercup. When we're praying that, we're in for a ride. And a ride where God's in control is always worthwhile. Sometimes it's a little scary, but it's always worthwhile. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
the spirit of joy and the spirit of hope, the spirit of new life, I invite you to share in this morning's presentation of God's tithes and our offerings.
Almighty God, we offer you these gifts and our hearts and lives. Use them to help your kingdom and your will to be done in our church, in our community, and in our world. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Would you join me in the spirit of prayer? Lord, as we come before you this day, there is so much in our world that is beyond us, that, that horrifies us, that frightens us, that angers us. Help us look away for a moment, not to ignore, but to regain our, our perspective. Let us look upon you. Let us be swept up in your faithfulness, bathed in your glory, soothed by your love, empowered by your grace, challenged by your will. Let us focus upon you, upon your power, upon your glory, upon your grace that is so much more than anything we could imagine or muster. And let us look back at our world knowing we are connected to you. Give us new eyes to see. To see the, the suffering and to see love in action. To see those who have fallen between the cracks easily forgotten. To see those who, who present a, a tough outward exterior but whose hearts are longing to belong, to be loved, to have their lives count for something more than the temporary illusions of of power and position. Help us to truly pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not as a wish, but with deep and abiding trust and conviction and commitment. Lord, we ask you to do what we cannot, but if there are ways that you can use us, make us open to that. We pray for peace. Where the powers of evil and, and war and destruction seem to reign supreme. Help us to be faithful in following the Prince of Peace. And help our our politicians stop being politicians and, and start becoming leaders. Stop playing games with 
with things that get votes and start tackling real issues and problems. Lord, we look to you. Strengthen us, renew us, encourage us that we might be your faithful witnesses wherever that might be as sources of hope and encouragement and witnesses of love. We lift up these and all our prayers in the name and spirit of Jesus the Christ. And as his people, we boldly pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. closing hymn, I, I want to thank Arlene for sharing her gifts with the organ over these past months. It's a joy to have you here and share. And we, we wish you the best of a safe trip north in, in the summer and a speedy return. I would invite you to stand as we sing together number 375. Thank mm -hmm. you. join me in our benediction. We go nowhere by accident. Wherever we go, God is sending us. Wherever we are, God has put us there. God has a purpose in our being there. Christ who dwells within us has something he wants to do through us where we are. And now as we go forth some for a long distance, I invite you to trust in this and to believe it not in your head, but in your heart. 
and to go in the joy of God's power, the joy of God's grace, and the joy of God's love, so be it. Please remain seated for the postlude and Cindy and I will come at the end of that to greet you at the back of the church. <laughs> 